Hi there, and welcome to Gypsy Studios. I'm Christy Bell, and I will be your instructor today. But before we jump right in, I wanted to offer a little bit of advice and also then go over some of the supplies that you're gonna to need to have ready before we get started. So, advice. Remember that you are learning. This is something new. This is something you're doing for the first time. So give yourself some grace and understand that it takes a lot of practice and patience to learn something new. You don't really just start out being amazing at something. You might start out with an eye, you might start out with some talent, but to really learn how to do something well, you have to hone that skill. So you have to really work at it, you have to really practice, and you have to take those gifts that you have and, and, and put it into practice and learn new ways to use things. So for example, say that I'm like a really great um, pianist. So I play the piano like no other. Like I have such a great, um, I have such great piano playing skills, right? But then if you give me say a violin, I'm probably not gonna know how to do that. So if I try to pick up a violin after having played the piano, I'm gonna play the violin and hear all the sounds that are sounding so wrong and know that all the notes are wrong because I know how the notes should sound because I play the piano. But the thing is, I don't know how to use this new instrument yet. So just try to remember those things that when you're learning something new, even if you've drawn before, even if you've painted with oils before, even if you've painted with watercolors, whatever experience of art you have, know that this is something new if you're learning acrylic painting for the first time or if you're even taking a class for the first time. So remember to give yourself some grace and, and be patient with yourself and know that um, nobody starts out a professional artist. Everybody starts out as an amateur and, and works toward that goal. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is acrylic paint is super forgiving. It's an awesome medium. It's why it's my favorite, honestly, because it is, it is a medium that dries so fast that you can easily paint over things. So say you get something in the wrong spot. So we almost always start with yellow paint and we start with yellow paint because it's the lightest color, it's really easy to cover over. So if you get something in the wrong spot, you don't have to stress about it. You can just draw the right line. So, you know, we drew the drawing with the yellow paint and then when you go in to make a correction, you just make the right one. And you don't have to worry about getting those lines off or anything because we're gonna paint over all of it. So um, that's my biggest advice to you is don't stress. Also, when I tell you don't worry about certain layers, really don't worry about it because a lot of times we're painting over some of those things. And acrylic painting is a lot about building layers. So the more layers you have, um, the richer the painting is going to look. So remember those things. And um, also, <laughs> while I'm at it, acrylic paint dries really fast, which is good for painting and, and, um, and being able to paint on top of and recovering things like that, but it's not so good for your clothes. So if you're wearing clothes that you don't wanna get paint on uh, and have it stay on there forever, you might wanna wear an apron to cover your clothing. Or, uh, or just make sure you're wearing clothes that it's okay if paint gets on there because acrylic paint dries hard and it dries on the fabric and it won't come out. So, um, but occasionally you can, if you go really quick, like if you notice that you got the paint on you right away, if you take that piece of clothing off and go straight to the sink really fast and rinse it out, oftentimes you can save it and you can get the um, paint out. But I just wanna let you know, you have to do it right away. Don't let it sit till the end of your painting and then go try and get it out because you won't be successful. Um, so let's talk about other things you're gonna need for this. For painting with me, you're going to need um, usually three brushes, sometimes less, but um, a big paintbrush, a medium-sized paintbrush, and a small detail paintbrush with a point. Um, can, you can really get almost every painting done with, with these three paintbrushes if you can make that happen. Um, some are just these two, etc. Of course, if you have more paintbrushes, great. Use as many as you want. Um, but I just want to show you that's that's the bare minimum that you need. Another thing is I, I use a palette knife for mixing paint, uh, but you don't need to. I'm going to do most of my videos without it just because I'm assuming that a lot of people don't have all the supplies 
uh, that they might need. So, but you do need something like a butter knife or a paint knife or something if you have uh, paint pots like this to get the paint out of because you can't put your paintbrush in there because you'll start mixing colors and you don't want to do that and contaminate your new paint. So uh, I use a palette knife, butter knife, cheese knife, all sorts of things can work for this. Uh, you also need a water jar with water for rinsing your brushes. And I use a paint rag like this. Uh, this is just an old rag that uh, has now become a paint rag. So if you have like an old cleaning rag or even old shirts that um, you're done with or that have holes in them or something, now you can rip them up and you can use it for this. It's really just to, uh, once, once you're done rinsing a paintbrush, it's just to wipe the paintbrush on here and get the excess paint or water off your brush or to clean your palette knife in between using that. You'll need palette, a palette of some kind. You can use a plate, you can use paper plate, you can use wax paper. I use this palette paper, I love it. It's just basically wax paper on a little, I don't know, cardboard thing. And then you can just tear it off and throw it away, which is nice. I also really like stay wet palettes. That keeps your paint wet. So if you're working on a project uh, and then you want to put it away and come back to it later, your paint will all still be workable. Otherwise, the acrylic paint dries hard. Uh, lastly, you're going to need a canvas or a painting surface of some kind. Uh, there's these kinds of canvases that have a profile. This is a thin profile. There's thicker profiles. There's also flat um, palette. Or, or sorry, not palette. Um, this is canvas board. Um, so there's those kind. There's, there's all kinds of, there's also uh, canvas paper. You can also get away with just any thick paper. If you have thick paper, you can usually use this. I would just say less water uh, when you're rinsing things and make sure you really dry it off on a rag um, or a paper towel, but it's a lot more environmentally friendly to use a rag. I'm gonna tell you in the next slide what paint colors you're going to need and also what uh, paint brushes you'll need to use. So for those, uh, just hold on tight and we'll get you that information in just a second. Okay, thanks. I hope you enjoy and have fun. Okay, I'm all set up and ready to get started on this alpaca. Now, the first thing I want you to know is that the colors that I have here are the colors that I'm gonna use. I will actually um, talk through any color adjustments. So if you don't have the specific colors that I have, I will show you different ways to, um, to paint this guy. And you don't have to use traditional colors. I'm gonna use traditional colors, like it's gonna be a little brownish, brownish yellowish alpaca, but Yours can be purple. It can be really whatever color you want. So I'm gonna show you how to do that once we get there, but I just wanted to lay that out for you and let you know that just because I have these colors laid out doesn't mean that that has to be what you have going on, all right? So let's get started with our littlest brush, the one with the point, and we'll just dip it in the water to get some excess, some of the excess water off, and then wipe it on our rag so it's not dripping. And you can just leave it there for a minute. Let's get some yellow. Now you do want this color to be yellow. This should be, um, it can be any color yellow. I'm gonna use sort of this neutralized yellow. This is a yellow oxide. Or actually it might be raw sienna, but either way, it's about the same color. All right, now we're gonna get the angle of the neck in like this. That's my angle. Okay, so we have a little bit of an angle here. Kind of like that. The other angle will be very similar. And that one, you just don't have to go up quite as far. This one will go up a little bit less than this guy. All right, and this part now, I have almost directly in the center so find the center of your canvas. Mine's right about here. Okay, so when you find the center, you're just gonna go down a smidge, like a tiny bit, and make a little line there. That's gonna be where your llama's nose is, or sorry, alpaca's nose.
Okay, so now we have that mark. Now I want to make a circle around that. And it's actually going to be a little bit of a different, it's not perfect circle, it's more like an egg shape. So you have this portion right here, and then you're going to go up. This can be very light, it doesn't need to be uh, dark. I'm going to make mine a little bit darker than yours, just purely because I want you to be able to see it. There you go. Okay, see that little egg there? And then you can just make a little line right there, right in the center. And that's going to be the center of this guy's little mouth there, just so you know. You don't need to actually define that really well yet. But there's that. And I'm also going to have you make a little shape. It almost looks like a heart right here, so we're going to draw it like a heart. So there's the top two parts of the heart. And then it goes down like this. Okay. Now, at the top of your egg right here, I want you to do a really thin line, like this. That's going to be your eye line, so your eyes are going to be right there. But first I want to do the actual head. I just wanted to show you where that's going to be so that you know kind of where you're headed. So the next part is to go into here and just out in the outside of this little mouth area, you're going to go out on each side. And I'm going to go just beyond the neck here. Just beyond the neck, like this. And then I'm going to go under. Oops. I'm going to give him a little chin here. Okay, so I'm going to ignore this. That, this, this. Okay, so we have this line right here. That's the outside of our alpaca's head. And that's going to go up past here because his eyes are going to be right over here. Right? So then we got to make a little room for a poof on the top of his head. And go around here. So that's about what you're doing for the head there, the head shape. Now let's give them some ears. So your ears are going to go pretty high. They're going to go almost to the edge of this canvas here. So I start over here on the edge. I'm going to go like this, like that. One. And then over here, same thing. There we go. And then I'm also going to do just a little bit right here. So we have both of those lines. All right, now let's get these eyes in. So you're going to start, so at the side of this, of the mouth right here, you're going to go over just a tiny bit and then up. That'll be the starting point for the eyes. So see how you're on the side of the mouth? You just go over a tiny bit, over a tiny bit and up. So. You don't need to draw this line, I'm just showing you. That's how I'm doing it. So I'm going to do the same thing over here a little bit and then up. Okay, so that's where I'm starting that eye. Okay, so don't copy me here. You don't need those. Although it doesn't really matter if you have them because we're painting over it anyway. Just want you to know. Beep. Beep. Okay. Now our llama eyes are going to go. From this point, it goes big, round, like that. And then I'm just going to do a whole little rounded eye right here. And it goes back down, like that. So up, and big round. Over here, same thing, up, and then round.
right? Eventually we'll have some lashes there, but that's later. So the last thing I want you to do is to kind of make a little hairline. So the hairline's gonna go from the point of the eye right here, right around there, up here, and then back down again to here. Okay. There you go, that's the basis of our little guy here. I'm gonna do one more line just right here. Give him a little chin. He sort of has a double chin. <laughs> okay, I think we're good here. Yeah, this looks good. I think I'm gonna do this. Now you can put your paintbrush in the jar and we'll need some new colors. So at this point, you get to choose. I'm gonna use, like I said, my brownish color, but you can use literally whatever color you want for this. So it's mostly gonna be a single color alpaca, but we're gonna add shadows and highlights as well. So what you'll do is whatever color you're using, you're gonna substitute for the brownish color that I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna start mixing that color up. To get that color, I'm gonna use Burnt Sienna. And I'm also gonna use this yellow color. And in Burnt Sienna, you can make yourself if you would like. It's mostly orange. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it's mostly red um, with a tiny bit of green. and green is with yellow and blue, if you have the primaries. Mm, I think I still need a lot more yellow. So let me get more yellow. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So one thing I'm gonna do to start is pull away a little bit of this color so that I can use it for later. I'm gonna be making a dark version and a light version as well. So I wanna make sure I have some of that left when the time comes. I'm gonna wipe off that palette knife. And now I'm gonna switch to uh, my biggest brush for a little bit and then I'm probably gonna use my middle brush as well when I get to some of the smaller detail areas and I don't wanna mess up. So I'm gonna get this big brush wet and use this color. And you'll use whatever color you're gonna create here. And with our student grade paints, these usually require more than one layer. So I'm just gonna go in here, this is gonna be my first layer and I'm gonna to expect to need to do more. Fill in the neck here. I'm gonna fill in the neck and I'm also going to fill in right in this area for the hair. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same color in here in the face, but I'm gonna make sure I keep the outlines so I can still see them. So I wanna kinda do this so that I don't totally lose my lines. And if you need to use a smaller brush at this point, uh, go for it. See how I'm doing this so I can kinda see? And you can go over your little line that you made there. See how I'm staying in between? I'm leaving those yellow. 
yellow ones there. And I'm not going to do it here in the nose. I'm going to leave that and I'm going to leave the eyes. The ears I'm going to use a different color for. And I'm going to use a similar color on the face too, but I wanted to have a little bit of a base color there first. And I will actually use my medium brush and just get a tiny bit of this just right on the edge of the ear here. doesn't need to be in the inside, just the edge. Okay, now with this color, I am going to use this part right here, what's left, and I'm going to add some black to it. I want to get a shadow color. So I'm just going to put the black on the side here. I'm not going to add it into the pile yet, just because black is really strong. So I don't want to bombard it right from the beginning. I just want to start with a little bit at first and then slowly add it in. Yeah. That should be good for the first for the darkest areas. So if you decided to make your alpaca purple, you would be mixing purple with a little bit of black now. Just a little, you don't need too much yet. I'm also gonna use my little detail brush right now just to get some black on the eyes. So just pure black, since I have it on my palette here. Do the same thing over here. All right, that looks good enough there. Okay, now let's go back to our big brush again. I'm gonna dry it off so it doesn't have any excess water on it. And now I'm gonna use this color, especially in a few areas, especially here, right under the neck where you'll see a shadow. And I'm getting, it's a little bit less thick down here. I'm just kind of brushing it in here a little bit thin. I'm also going to add it right here because this is going to be really fluffy and puffy. So underneath it'll create a shadow. Where else? 
that's maybe a little bit over here. Yeah, that looks good. I'm also going to add it right here where that little chin was. And I'm going to put it all in here as well. Okay, now I want to show you what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to use my middle size brush now. And I'm actually going to use this color to kind of come out here and do squiggly little marks here. And these are not going to be the final marks or anything. We just need to get some dark stuff on here to make it kind of fuzzy. Just try and go every which way with your brush. You start in the center and you pull out and away from the canvas. Okay, now that I have my medium brush, I'm going to do another couple little marks just to get this. I want this to be dark enough in here. That should be dark. And then kind of underneath it too. I'm going to do a little bit more just this way. Okay, now I'm going to mix a new color. The new color is going to be burnt sienna and black. So this color, if you don't have the primaries, um, what you're going to do, or sorry, if you don't have these colors, like the burnt sienna and the yellow, what you're going to do is mix together yellow, blue, and red uh, to get like a brownish color, and then you'll add some black to it as well. So I'm going to do brown, black, Burnt Sienna, black, Mars black, first. Pretty much equal parts of both. Maybe a little bit more now. So it should be pretty dark at first. And before we get it any lighter, I do have a couple places I want that to go. So I'm just going to use it really quick with my little baby brush. So this color, I want to see in a few places. I want to see it right here around the eyes. Just right around the edges of the eyes. You probably won't notice this too much. But in the light, you might see it. And I also want to do it in the nostrils. So the nostrils we haven't really developed yet, but they're going to be on the sides of this heart right here. So they're going to go like this. Down, back up, like that. I also want to define this area right here. like that. That's really all I want to do with that. Now I'm going to go in and add a little bit of white to it. So I need to make sure this is very clean before I dip into the white. Okay, so now I have a nice 
grayish purpley color. It's like a dusty gray, dusty purple. That is a great color for a few places on my alpaca. So first I'm going to put this inside the ears. You don't have to be too um, worried about the edge right there. It's okay if those two colors blend together. Also going to stick this right in here, kind of where our other shadow was, actually exactly where our other shadow was. And I'm also going to put it under the eye right here. And a little bit right here. And this is just because this is the snout that comes forward. So you kind of need to see some um, definition here. So I'm going to do a little bit right here too. And a little bit right here. And we're going to put this under here. And right in here. So the way I do it so it looks kind of like a lip right here is I just kind of go right up to that edge and then pull away. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm also going to add a little bit of that right in here. I'm going to do it sort of dry brush so you just don't have a ton of it in here. Just a funny little marking that this guy has. And then we're going to go over this with a bunch of other colors. So I think that's good for now. I might go a little bit right here too. Under this eye. And right here. And we're gonna go over these so don't worry it looks dark right now it's going to look dark for a little bit and then it'll get better. Okay now we're gonna add a bunch of white so it might help if you have a ton of color here it's probably gonna be more helpful to just grab your white take it in and mix just a little bit of that color in. Yeah, that's like the color I want. Okay, so this is much lighter and this is gonna be the majority of the face. So back with my medium brush, I'm gonna use this guy and I'm gonna come in here and get a bunch of this color and see how I'm just gonna go up and kind of into this color. And it's okay if you have some of these other colors coming through, it's actually better if you do. And I'm just going to go out here a little bit because some of this color fur will still be there. So this is just the center of the face. So you see I'm kind of like flicking out like that. It's going to help look like transition. So you're going to go just a little bit between here. And up in here. So right up in here, you'll want your strokes to kind of be rounded. It'll help it make, it'll help make it look like a um, snout. And again, you see how I'm kind of doing a light layer here? I'm not doing really a ton of paint. And that's intentional.
All right, and on the edges here, you can kind of blend it in together if it's still wet, which mine kind of is, with a little bit of water and your finger. I'm going to also use this on the ears here. I'm going to go on a, for a line right about there. And then a line over here. Same thing over here. And you notice I'm leaving a little bit of this brown still showing. That's intentional. And now I'm going to use um, my little baby brush for this part because this is kind of the wispy ears. So I want to start in the center and kind of pull out. I mean, not from the center, but from this like line that you just created. And I'm going to leave this color here, luckily we have enough of it, so that when you go into the background, you can still do, if it goes out of the ear, you can do extra on top. Okay, now what I'm going to do is go back to this color. This is my main color. So if you use a different color, go back to your main color, whatever that one is that you chose. Now what I'm gonna do is in here, I'm gonna start kind of going just like this, adding in some extra color here. And I know it's gonna kind of come out here. Ooh, actually, maybe I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for the stuff on the edge here. because we don't have our background in yet. So I'm just adding some of this in here. So you see it looks kind of like a little more furry. So you have more layers here. I'm going to do a little bit extra in here, just going out like this and kind of blending into this other color just so we have an extra layer. Oh, I forgot one spot here. We're gonna go back in to this with this color, with this light gray. I'm gonna fill in this area with that. A little too much water on my brush. I'm going to leave that little yellow spot because that's going to be darker.
All right now it's time for the background color. So we're going to do the background and then we're going to come back in and make it fluffy furry everywhere. So I'm going to do a pinky background. So actually I don't need a ton. I'm going to get a little bit of red. It's a lot of red. <laughs> I'm going to get a bunch of white. I'm going to get a little yellow because I like kind of a corally color. So let's see what this gets me first. I'm going to slowly add in the red because the red is really strong. I don't want orange. I want it to be pinky. So I want to make sure I have enough red. Well, maybe a little more. Maybe a teeny bit more yellow. There we go, I like that. Okay, now I'm gonna rinse my biggest brush. Oh, I forgot to do the nose. Sorry, I keep forgetting on this one. Okay. We're going to go back in with a baby brush and I'm going to use this uh, darker color mixed with a little bit of the other dark color. So that's going to be a different color for everybody and that's totally fine. I'm just going to get a little more of this because it's drying up. Okay. And that's going to be this color. I'm just going to pull up like this. To get that little nose effect thing. Actually, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to add it back in here a little bit. And I'm going to add a little bit more of my light right in here to break up that. Okay, now I'm going to use my big brush. Make sure it's really dry. Use this color I got. Go right up here close to the guy, close to my alpaca.
some dark in there. I'm going to shave this guy in just a little. There. So now you got to let this dry for a little bit until, um, until this is no longer shiny. So you can tell kind of when you hold it up a certain way that it's still a little shiny and wet. So as soon as that is dry to the touch, then we're going to pick back up, okay? Okay. Just a few more steps now. All right, I think I'm going to have to get some extra color here because I'm running low. So I'm going to need some more of this color, and I'm also going to need a little bit more of this color, but with more white in it. So to do that, I'm first going to just focus on this color. So whatever color you had that was the main color of your alpaca, get more of right now. So for example, if it was purple, make some more purple if you need it. Let's see. I think I still need more yellow. Yeah, that's nice. So now with my medium brush, I'm going to go in and make some fun little swirls. So they have kind of kinky hair and I want to make sure that they're going every which way, all the directions but that you also have some space in between for some dark. And you have to keep loading up a lot of paint for this part. We're going to do one more layer after this, just so you know. down here. Same idea, just a little less squiggly. You can still do squiggly, but it's, I guess, in the di direction of down still.
now I'm gonna do the lighter version of the um, the face color just on the highlighted side and this is the highlighted side which you probably don't know yet because we haven't done a lot about that just yet so I'm gonna add more white into this color there you go it's a lot lighter use my medium brush rinse it out and now I'm gonna do just a few spots so watch where they go because this is where the lights hitting our little llama guy right here so you're trying to squint and create the same shapes that I'm making here And this is more furry here. And do just a tiny bit right around here too. All right, and I'm gonna to switch to my baby brush and do a little shine for the eye, just pure white. Oops, it wasn't pure white. And this one's a little less over here. Now I'm going to add some white into my main color. So again, if you're using purple, you're going to add white to your purple here. I'm going to need more white than that. I already know it. That's a nice color. Okay, kind of a camel-y color. So rinse my medium brush out and get going. So now what you want to do is you're doing a ton on this fur, this fur, and then in here just a little bit. But the important thing is that you don't get rid of all the work that you've done. So you want to keep all these layers happening. Um, most of it's not, I mean, this color is not going to go on this side at all, like anywhere. So it's mostly going to go in here on the face, a tiny bit over here, and then up in here, and then just a little bit right in there. Okay. So you just want to make sure that you're not covering over all the other colors. So you want to see all these different colors showing through. Scribble, 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 scribble. And you don't want it to be perfectly... Um, even everywhere either.
So now what I'm doing is because when you look at it, it's too evenly dispersed everywhere. So I'm making a couple clumps, which is more accurate for hair. But I'm kind of blending it together, if you see. And now I'm going to go down in here just a little bit and add it in here. And then kind of just blend it a little in here. Okay, now I'm going to add it into the face here. You want this to go out here. These are pulling straight out here. might add a tiny bit of the original color back in. Not a lot, but just a little bit so it looks a little bit darker on this side since this is still the shadowed side. Last little thing I'm going to do is take this color, mix with this. So two, like in between here, you have like a nice like in between gray color. I'm just going to do one little line right here. And one little right here. Mess that one up because I didn't want to have my hand in there, so I'm going to fix it with a little bit of black. All right, there you go, guys. There's your cute little alpaca. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'd love to see all the different alpacas that you've painted. If you loved this video and want us to keep making more for, um, hopefully for free, um, we would so appreciate a donation 
toward that end. If you can't, we totally get it. We're with you on that. <laughs> um, but any, any support helps. So thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Just noticed a little spot that I messed up right in here. So I'm going to fix it really quick. I think that's about right yeah there you go and I got some splatters over here too in the pink so I'm gonna fix those as well okay hope you had fun thanks for joining us uh, don't forget to tag your photos um, of the finished pieces or even just while you're painting um, on on social media and tag us gypsy studios art and gypsy studios art spot thanks so much